I had a teacher in the seventh grade, Mr. Kingwall, the guy that left me back. He made you read a book a month and do oral book reports. Oh, shit. And I really learned a lot about myself because I learned how bad my comprehension was. And that's ADD. I learned how bad I could read a whole chapter. And then you could say, Joey, what's the chapter about? And go, ah. Uh. So I would have to read everything twice. Till today, I read everything twice as I'm reading it. It's, it's impo- I won't retain anything if I don't. I even have to make notes sometimes. When I read a good book, once I'm on page 15 or 20 and this book's got me, whether it's a Jimmy Page book, which I I started the other day and then I, I didn't take it on the fucking plane because I knew I'm going to get hooked on this fucking thing. Lilingus cocksucker. Get me a book that's going to get me hooked like heroin and it's two fucking days of reading up all night and that's what would happen to me. In prison? Well, in prison I started reading and my one of my good buddies in there was a li- librarian and he, he found the books that I liked. You know, in prison was where I discovered Cujo, and I discovered... Oh, that's uh, a scare. I haven't even... I discovered uh, On Wings of Eagles, the Ross Perot story. I discovered Snowblind by Zachary Swan, another good book about smuggling. This guy was smuggling in the 60s. I discovered a book, you know, uh, just, just this guy, you turned me, you know, books on music. It was endless. It was endless. And the, and the book club was us in prison talking about the book when I brought it back. He would give me the book, I'd read it, and then I'd come back, and it was him and a black guy that were always in the library, and they read everything, and they kind of read the same. Guess what else I read in prison? What? Goodfellas. Way before the movie. Way before the movie. I read Goodfellas in prison, and during, while I was reading their book, they did an interview on Henry Hill in 2020. So I was reading top-notch books in prison. I read like the, you know... uh, I read a little bit about, you know, because I had a lot of black friends in there. So I read a little bit about, not Martin Luther King, but Minister Farrakhan. I, th- I read a lot of different stuff. Obviously, prison is terrible. But if you're, like, like if, if you were lucky, you had, you went through high school. But if there's, if there's people in prison who didn't get to go to school for whatever reason, can you go to prison and get an education? Yes. Really? That's cool. Yes. Yes. You go to prison if you really, really, really want to learn and they have it available to you there's inmates that are solid guys man and just because they made a mistake some mistakes were worse than others some weren't thought out because of the crime i did and the points i had and the situation i had when it when i got it i I went into a place where it was people getting out soon they had two or three years left and these guys had already done their hard time, and I got to talk to them, and they explained different things to me, you know. Um, and I listened. I listened. I learned a lot in that. I learned a lot about human nature. I learned about what I didn't want to do in my life, the things I did not want to do. I looked at. I, I would look at ten inmates and look at seven of them that all had the same habits. I shied away from all those fucking habits, you know. Did you did you see those habits in yourself at that point? Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, I, two years before I got a, in ni- I got arrested in nineteen eighty seven, and in nineteen eighty four I knew I was going to get arrested. It was just a matter of time. I was just walking around. In nineteen eighty five, I was walking around, getting waiting to get arrested or waiting to get shot. And I was carrying a weapon. Once I went to Colorado, the weapon stayed, and I became a different person. It was like I was a fucking uh, person who would change. And then after a few months, I went back to who I was, a fucking thief and credit card. You know, it was like a, it was like a fucking pattern. But I always, you know, during that whole time, I was taking classes. Even during when I lived in Snowmass, and I was doing all the shit I was doing up there. I was at Colorado Mountain College. I was always one of those guys that had a little bit of hope. That had a little bit of hope. I didn't think I could become anything, but I wanted to absorb as much knowledge as I could that would get me to the next level. That's so crazy to me, because you said that today on your Periscope, that you wanted to make something of your life. And I don't know, I, I, I'm starting to think that maybe my thinking has been wrong, 
But ever since I've been a kid, the only, like, to me, making it means just you have a lot of money. Like, no, no, no. That's that's what people are wrong. That's the misconception we have to we're about 30. Because by 30, we meet people who have a lot of money. Right. That are living their life wrong. And we meet people who have a lot of money that are meeting their, they're living their life the wrong way. Or we admire how there's two ways to live your life, how you have money. It's when what part of your life you get it. If I give 10, 21-year-olds a million dollars cash within a year, six of them will be broke. At least, Two of them yeah. would have made investments. They would have bought a pizza place or bought their parents' houses or something. But six of them would have been gone. Now I take those same 10 people and give them a million dollars apiece when they're 10 and the percentages will go low because they've worked. They've paid off debt. You mean like at 30? Ten years at 30, later. yes, I'm sorry, at 30. And, that, and if I take those ten, same 10 people at 40, what will happen? The percentages go higher because we paid our dues. It's like a, it's like we goof around, but it's true with women. When they're 20, they want the hot guy who's got a tattoo and a beard and you know says all these things. But when they're 30, they, they lower their expectations. By the time they're 40, they'll, they'll marry a guy with a kid. You know, because they understand where life goes. It's a... I'm happy. I I accepted prison at that age. It was good that I went at that age. Uh-huh. And it was good what I got out of it at that age. I got all the right things at that age. And listen, like I said a thousand times before, I didn't stop being a fucking criminal till 15 years ago in one way or another. You know, I was still breaking a law or I was selling coke or stealing lighters. It's still breaking the fucking law. What do you think would have happened if you hadn't been gone to the prison that you went to? If you'd gone to, like, a hardcore prison? I would have fought for my life. I would have, whatever the situation was, I had a rise for it. I knew that mentally before I went in. I knew that at every level. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But whatever it was, I was prepared. You know, I didn't play into the game. Listen, I could have gone into prison, hooked up with three dudes the first day. Because the first day I hooked up, you know me, dog. You seem, I got every army. I get the best Armenians in town. The first day I got to Camp George West, I hooked up with this dude from New York. Da, 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 talking to me. And within an hour, he had me hooked up with a shot of heroin in his room an hour later. What are you talking If I wanted a shot of heroin. And then he had a buddy. Who I could, I, I've seen this guy before. He was a white dude that kept smiling and agreed with him to everything. And I knew that these two guys were, by the way, I wasn't going to do heroin. I said, yeah, I'll see you later. I got along like needles and I disappeared. About a day later, a kid took me aside and go stay away from those two guys. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.